Okay, now we're going to talk about how to uh, organize your code uh, and do effective coding that that kind of uh, keeps track of your progress so you don't lose things and you can also go back in time if you uh, find out you have broken something over time. So to do that, we're going to use GitHub. Um, Git is Git Git is a a um, a um, what do you call it? Uh, a, an organization tool. Uh, that is open source and free, and everybody can can use Git. And then there are a few sites uh, out there that allow you to use Git with their websites for free. Uh, so Microsoft owns uh, GitHub, which is the the most common one to use. Uh, GitLab is also a very common one that uh, I use mostly, but GitHub is generally just a little bit more friendly and a little bit better connected to Windows. Uh, so if you're using Windows, it's probably just an easier thing to do. So to start, you make an account. I already got an account, so you're gonna have to go out here and make an account. Um, so once you have an account, uh, you know, you know your username and your password. Uh, you need to create a new repository. Um, give it a a name. Again, uh, it's it's good to um, use only letters, numbers, and uh, underscore, and always begin with a letter. Uh, and you want to make it private so no one else can see what's going on. Uh, let's see. Um, so we're going to add a git ignore uh, for uh, um, for code composer, but we're going to make it ourselves. Uh, and we don't need a license because it's only going to be for ourselves. We don't need to read me because it's only for ourselves. You can add a description if you want to, but all right. So we now have an empty repository, which is uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to link this to our workspace um, that we we uh, had set up from from the uh, code composer. So I'm just going to pull that up on my my file explorer here. Maybe you're not seeing this, but I'm just navigating workspace um, E10. Uh, looking in there, um, we'll take a look at what, what that looks like. So you can see I still have this first program that I just made a little bit ago, and then I've got these other things. And um, so I want to find a way to like archive my, my first program and all my additional programs that will show up you know, as I make them, but I don't really want to um, add these. So that's what we're going we're gonna to do with the git ignore. Um, and also inside first program, uh, there's a whole bunch of things in here. Uh, some of them are useful, but some of them are computer specific. And if you go and grab this and put this on a different computer, you're going to have problems. So we're going to ignore uh, the, the, the files in here that we don't want to transfer to another computer. All right. So that means we need a a git ignore file. I'm going to pause this so I can grab my git ignore file. Okay, so I grabbed my git ignore file and I've updated it to not like these files, so we'll open it up and take a look at what's inside. These are just the files we don't want it to include. Uh, there's some star star things that say any any directory structure, like no matter what path you need to get through, you can get there. I'm not the best, best I can ignore, but uh, this should work. Uh, generally, I, I just over uh, specify what I don't want included. So these are all the CCS files we don't want uh, that are not useful to transfer between computers. And then these are the files that are in this directory right here. So we don't want we don't want these other directories or any of the files that go along inside of them. So I just added these. Hopefully it works uh, when we go through it. I, again, I'm not the best at these, but generally to specify the things you don't want to, to save. Uh, and that just means you want to save your program and uh, the project files uh, that say, you know, how to build it. So I'll, I will link this up below the video and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. So I've got to, got to get ignore. So now I just need uh, all this. All I need to do is get GitHub desktop. Um, so I'm going to use this with CCS. CCS has Git, Git built in, but it's unfortunately pretty clunky. Uh, GitHub Desktop does just a better job. Uh, GitHub Desktop's not the best version either, but if you're just working on a project by itself, 
it's probably the easiest thing to get started. So easy to download. You can download anywhere. It doesn't require like a full installation. Uh, I don't think it's going to give me the Windows warning at all. It, it just installs locally to the user, uh, which is a good and bad thing. It means if you are using a multi-user system, uh, everybody needs to install it. But it means if you're working on a like a, a station that's you know maintained by your business or your university, you can install it as a local user without having to get someone else to you know come by and give you access. Uh, so I've already like had this installed in the past, so it still remembers my repositories. Um, so we're going to go out and. Um, Trying to remember which way to go um, since we want to push our existing stuff out. So we're going to do a new repository. Let's see how this works. And we're going to now go to workspace P10. Yeah, so I should have walked through this the first time. Uh, creating your repository won't work. Let's see if it works well enough through here. Seems like it should work. Don't need a name, don't need to do anything. Let's see if it actually works. Otherwise, this entire video is going to get redone. So what does it think is in this repository? I guess it was the easier way to, to get going. So unfortunately, it still knows who I am um, from, from past times. We're going to ignore that I made it out here. I apologize for that. So we'll actually go through and delete it. So at least you get to see how to do this. Um, no, I, I think it's up here for this one. Go to settings, repositories, and is it really on this one? Yeah, okay. It's just on the main page. I thought they, they hit it further than that, but you just scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then you have to type this in order to confirm. Uh, to be really insecure, you just, you know, copy it and paste it and say, yeah, I know, I'm going to delete that. And then we go back to GitHub Desktop. So I'm going to say we're going to publish this. Okay. Let's see what that did for us. All right. So we did publish. It now puts all these files up here. Uh, so these are this is my program. Uh, has my GitHub ignore and it is successfully ignoring uh, all those files. And 
everything is in sync. So if we come out here and just say that, you know, I wrote this and this is, you know, the date, I save it. Oh, it was wrong. So I, I made changes. I'm happy with my changes. I want to save for the day or I've, I've, I've reached a certain milestone that I want to, you know, um, note that. Uh, it says, hey, you made these changes. In red are the things that were removed. In green are the things that were added. Here are all the files that changed. So I need to say, the better you are at just writing a quick note of what you did, uh, the easier it is for you to go back in time to find out when things were working. Uh, so if you have to add a, a note. Um, I think it provides a default one for you, but Please don't have these notes all look the same. It doesn't actually provide you a good use. Uh, so you can go back in time if you need to. And we're just going to commit to main. Once you commit to main, it is saved on your local machine. And then once you um, have it saved your local machine, you want it pushed up. Uh, so you can you can make all these changes, like even if you didn't, if you were working at the beach or something, and you didn't have uh, internet, you can make a whole bunch of commits, uh, save them, and then once you're ready to share, um, then you would push to origin. And, and once you push to origin, it's backed up online. So if your computer crashes or whatever, uh, you still have your code. Uh, so you come out here, uh, you can see that first program has changed. And, and the last time it got changed was 31 seconds ago. Everything else in here is from my, my first push from 44 minutes ago. And you can come up and, and see that the only thing changed was here. Uh, we, we did something that would be if we click on the comment, it will show us everything that happened for that comment. Again, we have the red and green, uh, so you can see what changed in case something is working. And it just kind of uh, minimizes the program down to just what you need. Uh, if you want to see further, you can click these buttons and, and see, see more. Uh, you, can, you can do manual updates up here, too, if you want. Um, but generally, you're just going to work on it uh, remotely. Um, let's see, so everything's there. Uh, if you want to save, uh, share this with someone, which you want uh, them to work on it or review your code or whatever, uh, then you should share it with them. I, I normally use GitLab, so everything's just a little... a little off for me. Uh, might just be here for this one manage access. So you invite a collaborator. Um, I happen to know who that person is, so we'll click on the name. Uh, on GitLab, I can specify like permissions before I do uh, the invite button. Um, but we'll just do that after the fact, I guess. All right. Well, it must be a full collaborator, and that is how you add someone. So if you ever want to add me, they're going to add Z-U-I-D-E-M-S-C. That's my username. And there's my little icon if it helps find me. So we'll, we'll get rid of that. That's how you remove me if I'm I'm done being useful. Uh, each, each commit has its own date and stuff like that. Uh, I might redo this video, but uh, probably in just interest of getting it released, I'll, I'll push it out and uh, warn you that there's a couple couple missteps because I'm trying to work with uh, GitHub instead of Git desk, uh, GitLab this time. But um, works pretty well to, to save your files and then you know that everything's working. You can share them with others. You can get help. Uh, everybody else can download and and grab these and, and work on them. And uh, if you use the Git Ignore, which is required uh, for CCS, uh, no one's going to have issues when they grab their files and try to run them on their computer. Otherwise, you hit all sorts of walls, and it's it's only useful for you. All right.